So re related rates again today, right? And so we're going to look at today, I'm going to look once again at the Pythagorean relationship that we can pull out of the problem. And then um, the second problem we're going to deal with, um, how do you look at it when um, you're dealing uh, with um, a trig function relationship, okay? So that's what we're going to deal with today. Two problems that I'm going to do with you on the Ed Puzzle, um, and then we'll come back and do a third um, example with um, angles um, in class, all right? So um, a police cruiser is approaching a right angle intersection from the north and is chasing a speeding car that has turned and is now uh, moving straight east. So I'm going to draw in a coordinates um, north, south, east, west the directions, okay, to help us understand. So this is, the top is usually north and then south and then west is on the left and east is on the right. Okay, um, so when the cruiser is 0 0.6 miles north of the intersection and the car is 0 0.8 miles to the east, the police determine with radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. Okay, so that's, that's a derivative right there. That's a rate, so it's a derivative, okay? If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, at the instant of measurement, what is the speed of the car? Okay, so let's let's kind of na um, navigate and put everything in its place. A police cruiser is approaching a right angle intersection. So here's a right angle intersection from the north. So they're they're on the north side of this intersection right now. Okay, so I'm going to put right here. I'm going to label that P for police. Okay. Um, is chasing a speeding car that has turned and is now moving straight east. So here's the car. And I'm going to use C for car. Um, and then some other things we know is that the police um, is approaching right angle. So they're coming this way, right? And so because this is vertical, I'm going to call this Y because it's changing. So I'm going to label that one Y. Because it's, uh, because it's vertical, okay? And then this one is horizontal, so I'm gonna call that one X. And um, when the police cruiser is 0 0.6 miles north of the intersection and the car is 0 0.8 miles to the east, the police, measure, the police determine with radar the distance between them and the car. Now the distance between the police and the car is this straight line distance right here. And we don't know what that is, right? And as he's coming, as he's coming this way and the car is going this way, this is changing. So we don't want to label it. So I'm going to put a variable on it and I'm going to label it. Um, let's label it Z just for X, Y, and Z. Okay. Um, if you wanted to label it something else, that'd be fine. <laughs> All right. I, I think the X and Y are helpful because one's horizontal, one's vertical. What you label this hypotenuse really doesn't matter. Okay. All right. So we know that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. Okay, so this, this derivative, what we know, what's known is that dz dt is equal to positive because increasing 20 miles per hour. So 20, and you can't use m for miles because m means meters, miles per hour. So mi for miles. Okay, so we know that um, if the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, okay, if the police is moving at 60 miles per hour, that'd be this way, right? And so, and it would, this would be decreasing. So that's the speed, but the derivative would actually be negative because this distance is decreasing, okay? So what's also known is that dy over dt is equal to negative 60 miles per hour. So they didn't say decrease or anything. You gotta realize, oh, that's shrinking. So the rate has to be negative, okay? And so what we wanna find is the speed of the car. So that would be dx over dt. And because I'm asking for speed, if this were to come out to be negative, and it won't but just because as they're moving this way, X is increasing, which means the derivative would have to be positive, which the velocity would be positive, okay? 
So then we want to find dx over dt when, and there's some stipulations here, the, complete, the cruiser, or when we say cruiser, it's the police cruiser, is 0 0.6 north of the intersection. So when y is 0 0.6 miles, and the car is 0 0.8 miles east, that would be your x. So x is equal to 0 0.8 miles. All right. And so we need a relationship, right, that deals with x because we're trying to find dx over dt, y and z. So the relationship here, because we're not talking about angles or anything, right? The relationship we could use is it's a Pythagorean rela relationship because this is a right triangle. So the relationship we're going to use to solve this is that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Relationship. So what we know is x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Okay, so we're gonna take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this. And we're gonna, and you should realize we're gonna pick up a dx over dt, we're gonna pick up a dy over dt, and we're also gonna pick up a dz over dt. Okay, and then we may need to figure out some other things, right, based on this, okay? So d dt of x squared plus y squared equals d dt of z squared. Okay, so the derivative of this would be 2x dx over dt. Plus, and this would be 2y dy over dt, and then this one would be 2z dz over dt. All right, so then, all right, so, so what we need to figure this out, okay, do we have x? Yeah, we have x. We're going to figure this out when x is 0 0.8, so this is 0 0.8. Um, we're trying to find dx over dt, so we're going to, use, we're going to solve for this one right here, um, 2 times y is 0 0.6, and we know dz dt, we know dy dt, I should have said dy dt earlier. Um, what we don't have is z right here, right? So how can we get z? So one way to think about it is go back to our relationship here. We know that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So at the time x and y, x is 0 0.8, y is 0 0.6, well, we could use this to help us figure out what the z is, right, at the same time. So that's what we're going to have to do. Okay, so we're going to use this relationship 0 0.8 squared plus 0 0.6 squared and equals z squared. Okay, so I'm going to take 0 0.8 squared plus 0 0.6 squared and we get one, which you mean z equals one. Okay. All right. So now we can start plugging stuff back in. Um, one thing you could do, it's not necessarily, but necessary, but you, what you could do is you could divide both sides by two and get rid of twos. Then it would just be x dx over dt plus y dy over dt is equal to z dz over dt. Um, if you saw that and you thought, hey, why can't you do that? You, you could, okay? So then two times my x, which is 0 0.8, and then dx over dt, and then plus two times my y, which is 0 0.6, times dy over dt, which is negative 60, is equal to two times z, which is 1, times dz dt, which is 20. Okay, so this would be 1.6 dx over dt. That's actually going to be minus, right? Because we're multiplying by a negative here. Um, 2 times 0 0.6 times 60. Would give you negative 72. Okay, and then that's equal to 40. 
and that means 1.6 dx over dt is equal to um, 112. Just checking my math. All right, and then divide by 1.6. And that would give you, now our distance that we're measuring X in is miles, right? And our T is hours. So this will still be miles per hour. And so 112 divided by 1.6, and we get 70. So 70 miles per hour. So they're asking for the speed of car, right? So the speed of the car is 70 miles per hour. If this, if this had come out to be a negative 70, then you still would have said the speed of the car is 70 miles per hour because they're not, they're not asking for the velocity, okay? Or the rate of change, they're asking for the speed, okay? Which is speed is always positive, okay? And that's it. Um, you could say, I mean, if you wanted to, you could add in when X is this and Y is this and all of that. Okay, but it's a, it's a lot on this problem. When it's simple, I would say, encourage you to write it, but this is that one moment in time when the car is 70 miles per hour. Okay. All right, let's look at the next example. And the next example deals with um, trig functions. So for this example, a television camera is at ground level filming the liftoff of a space shuttle okay, that is being vertically, that is rising vertically, according to the position equation, S is equal to 50 T squared. S is measured in feet, okay, and T is measured in seconds. So what this formula right here gives us is, if we put a time in, we're going to get how high the space shuttle is, okay, um, the vertical distance of the space shuttle, all right, which is altitude. Um, the, ca the camera is 2,000 feet from the launch pad, okay, find the rate of change in the angle of elevation of the camera at 10 seconds after liftoff, okay? So what's the, really the only thing that's known is this, and this is 2000 feet, but that's not changing. That's gonna stay 2000 feet. This is gonna change. And then also this is gonna change. We may need that, okay? And this angle theta, right, we're trying to, figure out um, the angle of elevation. This is called the angle of elevation. When you measure, when you're looking at something and you have to look up to see it, then the, the angle that your eyes move from horizontal to up to look at it, that's called the angle of elevation, okay? Okay, so what's known is that S is equal to 50 T squared, okay? And we want to find, we want to find the rate of change in the angle of elevation. So that would be, we would label that d theta over dt. Now we want to do this when t is equal to 10 seconds. Okay. So the relationship that we have is because we want to relate theta and we have this s right so we're probably going to have to pick up a ds over dt and our relationship is this that tan theta is s over 2000 so tangent of this angle is this side which we're calling s over 2000 okay so that's the relation that's the trig relationship we're going to use and they actually give it to us Okay, so we know that tangent of theta is equal to S over 2000. And I just want to say that's the same as 1 over 2000 times S. Okay, so looking at this, all right, we are going to, when we take the derivative of this, we're going to get d theta over dt. That's good because that's what we're trying to find. Okay, over here, we're going to pick up a ds over dt. So that means back up here, what's known is that s is equal to 50t squared, but I'm going to need ds over dt, right? Because I'm going to take the derivative of this. So if I take the derivative of 
of S with respect to T, that would be DS over DT. And just from this formula, I would know that it's 100 T, right? Because 50 times two, subtract one from the power. And now I got to take the derivative of the inside function and the derivative of T with respect to T would just be one, right? So DS over DT is just 100 T, okay? All right, so we're ready to go, come back over here. All right, we know the relationship is this. So I'm gonna take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So D over DT of tan theta is equal to D DT of one over 2000 times S. Okay, so the derivative of tan theta is secant squared theta times the derivative of the inside piece, which is theta with respect to time. So that'd be d theta over dt. So there's our d theta that we wanna find, right? And then over here, this is one over 2000 times s. And when we take the derivative of this, it'd be one over 2000 times, and the derivative of s with respect to t would just be ds over dt. Okay, now a few things. Um, secant squared theta, there's a trig function that we can replace this with, with this with, and it is one over cosine squared theta, okay? Because secant theta is defined as being one over cosine theta. So one over cosine squared theta times d theta over dt is equal to one over 2000 times ds over dt. So because this is one over cosine squared, I'm gonna multiply both sides by cosine squared theta. And this left-hand side becomes d theta over dt is equal to cosine squared theta times one over 2000 times ds over dt. Okay, so to figure this out, um, I'm gonna need to know what ds over dt is, right? Well, I, I'm doing this at t equals 10 seconds. So that means at, t, at 10 seconds, ds over dt would be 100 times 10 right here, right? Okay, so I know that ds over dt at, that's what that vertical line means, t equals 10 would equal 100 times 10 or 1000, okay? So all of this is happening at this moment in time, okay? Now, you may be thinking right now, wait, I'm gonna have to figure out the angle and then find the cosine of that and then square it. And the answer to that is, no, you really don't have to, okay? This is not, you don't have to find the angle. That's gonna be strange for this, okay? We don't actually need to find the angle. What we need is the cosine ratio of it. Well, what's the cosine ratio of this angle? Well, it's the, it's the um, adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So it's this, which we know is staying 2,000 feet over whatever this length is, right? And this length is dependent upon the time. And that's what this is, okay? So we also know um, S at T equals 10 is equal to 50 times 10 squared. So that would be 5,000, okay? Because 10 squared is 100, okay? And then 50 times 100 is 5,000, okay? All right. How do we get, and now I'm going to label this one. This is H, Okay, so how are these related to each other? Well, I know 
that at this moment in time, when it's 10, right, I know this isn't S at this moment in time, it's actually 5,000. And so we have 2,000 squared plus 5,000 squared is equal to H squared. And I'll have my hypotenuse, which then will allow me to write the cosine ratio for that angle, even though we never are going to find the actual angle. Okay. So what I know is this, we can use um, 2,000 squared. Plus, at this moment in time, it, this that I'm trying to figure this out at, this is 5,000. And then that's going to equal H squared. Okay. And when you take 2,000, I don't expect anybody to do this in their head. When you take 2,000 squared plus 5,000 squared, we get 29 million. And that's equal to h squared, which means h is equal to the square root of 29 million. Okay, because I now know the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse, I know that cosine of angle theta is the 2,000 over the square root of 29 million. So then um, what we, now we can put everything in, in its place, right? So now we know that D theta over DT is equal to this, but we're gonna need to square it, right? So this would be 2,000 over the square root of 29 million squared, and then times 1 over 2,000 times. And recall that ds over dt, that's 1,000, right? So that's 1,000. We'll just put parentheses around it. OK. Now, a couple things, all right? We can clean this up. It looks awful, but it's really not as bad as it looks, okay? So when we square this, right, we're going to square the 2,000, but we're here, we're dividing by 2,000, right? So there's going to be a 2,000 left up here, okay? So d theta over dt is going to be this 2,000 to cancel with one of these. So we're going to be left with one 2,000 up there. When we square the square root, the square root goes away. So the denominator here becomes 29 million. And I'm gonna have to pause because my pen is running out of ink. Okay, so then, all right. So we squared this one and we canceled with that one, right? And so we're now we're left with times 1000, okay? And then when we multiply this, all right, we're going to get 2,000. Um, actually, let's just do some cancel because we can cancel with, with the 29 million, right? So these three zeros are canceling with these three zeros. And these three zeros are going to cancel with these three zeros. And so we're left with 2 over 29. So d theta over dt is equal to 2 over 29. All right. And this is okay. So because trig functions in calculus are all in radians, the angle measurement is radians and the time unit is seconds. Okay. So this would be radians per second. Okay. So that means the angle of elevation is increasing. And that kind of makes sense because as the rocket goes up, this angle is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? All right, so the angle of elevation is increasing two over twenty nine radians per second. 
10 seconds after liftoff. All right, and that's um, one of the trig relationships, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is on trig relationships is you're gonna take the derivative of a trig function, right? And you're gonna pick up like something like this, secant squared theta, all right? And because you're using trig functions, you're gonna have a right triangle. So you're also gonna have the Pythagorean theorem that you could use, and you're never actually gonna have to probably find the actual angle because trig functions are a ratio, right? of um, a side of the right triangle over another side, depending on the, which trig function it is, okay? All right, so that's how you do it. So you gotta, you gotta realize, I don't actually need to find the angle. I need to find the ratio. And you can do that because most of the times you're gonna be given some type of length, all right? Okay, we'll do one more in class, okay? Um, those of you who don't have me, um, I'll just have a copy of the extra example that I have that I'll do, okay? All right, guys, see you back.